guys, what's up? I'm Brian here doing another video review for you guys, and this time we are taking a look at the Alien Attack STF-01 Farage. Now, before we take a look at the actual toy, let's take a look at the packaging. It is a pretty good size box. It's about, uh, I would say smaller than the Voyager class uh, Transformer size. On the side here, you got Farage. You also have an email on the side there. On the back here, you have the actual Farage figure. You have L. Sid, or uh, whatever it is, uh, coming soon. You also have a little description. Uh, let's see. And and you also get some very nice artwork right here. You get Alien Attack and whatnot. It, it's a pretty simple package, but it does its job. You also have a little card for Farage, which, by the way, I think Farage is like a combination of Ferrari and Mirage. You know, so you have that, even though technically his name is Dino. Uh, in, in Dark of the Moon, because we all know this is based on Dino. Anyways, uh, taking a look at the card. It's a pretty cool looking card. You get some stats, although it would be nice if he had a full uh, picture of Farage and not just his head. Because all these pictures that I'm seeing, except for on the back of the bo uh, box and of course inside the instructions, seems to be mostly just the head. Uh, I don't know, I just feel like a, a full picture on the side here maybe would be pretty cool. But I, I'm not complaining for what we've got. It, it's a cool looking, uh, you know, picture, so very nice. Anyways, we also have the instructions, which has a more uh, crisp looking uh, design for the head. Uh, this is more like uh, paint streaks. This is more based on what uh, he looks like in the film. And uh, inside the instructions, we also have all the accessories and whatnot, uh, the uh, the stance and, and, and the different mode. Uh, you also have how to attach some of the weapons, which I've noticed that there's these gold bits on the, uh, the pegs that attach to the wires. They're actually in black in the final toy, so this isn't actually from the final toy. Uh, you also get, and I didn't realize this right away, in fact, if you look at my opening video, I, I pointed these out as like, oh, they're extra fingers, and that's not the case. These are meant for articulated fingers. You get a pile of these gold bits, which are the ends of the fingers, and then you have all these, which is the rest of them. You can take the pin out using this little black pin thing, and you can swap out the fingers and the thumb for the articulated ones. Now, why would you swap back to the regular ones? Maybe because it's easier to pose, and uh, because it's uh, pointed out that you should not use them during the transformation process. I'm not sure exactly why, maybe they're too big, although it seems like there's enough room to where you could use them. So I have no idea why. Um, Maybe you can use them, they just don't want you to? I, I don't know. It, it's just weird. Um, I kind of want to swap out the hands, but if I can't transform it into the alt mode, then I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, and then you also have the instructions, which uh, are pretty okay for the most part. I, I figured out most of it. Uh, some of it was a little difficult. Um, and, and some of it I, I still can't really figure out if I got exactly right. Um, take, for example, the doors on the back here don't really want to line up, and I'm going to explain that later. Um, but there is one step in the instructions, and you want to follow the instructions very carefully because there's a step like this right here. I have to turn this around to where you can see the position of what the hands are supposed to go and the legs are supposed to go, and that's supposed to be an outline for you. And you can see the red bit, uh, the red panel on the arm lines up to the peg hole on the side of the roof. So that can help outline exactly where you're supposed to go. And then also he's got articulated heels and toes on the uh, the feet. So you gotta watch out and see if the toes are pointed up. And they're, they're very hard to turn, so be very careful with it, at, at least right away. Uh, they've loosened up to where, oh yeah, I can pose them right away, it doesn't matter. But, um, yeah, just be careful on that. Be careful on the instructions. Really look through. Oh, and, and there's also another thing about this is you can see a gray bit. Uh, actually, we'll take uh, we'll talk about that when we actually transform the toy. But yeah, that's 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 the instructions. You also have a couple of accessories. You've got the blades that I used in Dark of the Moon. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And then you also have these giant whip things, whatever they are, these giant claw things, which are pretty cool. Unfortunately, I popped this one out uh, accidentally. I, I mean, I don't know the definition of accidentally exactly when you do it on purpose, but yeah, I, I popped this out because I thought, oh yeah, the black bit can come out. No, it doesn't. Just the 
just a metal bit, and once you do, it's really hard to stay back in, so I have to glue that or something, I don't know. Anyways, uh, so you get that, and yes, these do use a metal wire inside, and you also have articulation at the claw bits. Uh, you've got a couple of joints in here, and then this little bit right here can also move. It doesn't rotate, so yeah. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at Farage himself. Now, he transforms into a little red car that's uh, totally not a Ferrari. Totally not a Ferrari 458 Italia. Definitely not. Um, and it looks pretty good for the mo- I had a stroke there. And it, it looks pretty good for the most part. Um, you do have to see the, those- Well, I guess don't have to. I guess if you cover your eyes. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyways, uh, you do see the, the little bits right here of the, the robot mode. That's unfortunate. On the back here, at least, that looks like engine detail. So, that's fine. Um, on the back here, you get some paint applications, which is very nice. You do get two different tones of red, but it's not as bad as, let's say, the Robots in Disguise Sideswipe from Transformers. That, that was weird. Uh, the wheels can move, although they don't really roll too well. I mean, yeah, they spin, but uh, you have a whole bunch of stuff going on underneath here. And a lot of the stuff can get in the way, like the, the shoulders right here and the feet right here. So even when you try to get everything exactly right, you can scrape on the ground. Um, but they're not bad. You know, the wheels look good. I, I love the shaping of it. I love the color scheme of it. Um... Yeah, very nice. You get some clear headlights. That is very cool. I believe there's two different tones of clear plastic on this toy, so that's pretty good. Uh, size comparison, because this is a third-party toy, and I really want to show that off. I've got Dark of the Moon Sideswipe in his alt mode. I'm sorry, I don't have too many things in alt mode for this. But as you can see, it's about... It's a little bit smaller than Sideswipe. Uh, pretty much just as wide. So, to some people, it's not going to seem like it's worth 80 bucks, but it is a... <clears throat> sorry, it is a third-party toy after all, so I can forgive it somewhat. Um, at least I paid 80 bucks, and that was with the shipping and all that. It actually goes for about 60, which isn't too bad. Um, so yeah, with that out of the way, there's not really much more to talk about. I do like the fact, and I know some people are going to be against this, I do like the fact that it is scaled more so to the deluxes and voyagers more than the masterpiece scale and i know some people would want a masterpiece scaled version of dino honestly i kind of don't because most of the dark of the moon toys i have is the deluxes and voyagers so if there was a masterpiece version of dino that means oh well i guess i have to also get a whole bunch of other third-party stuff and it, it just looked weird. I just want a Dino that will fit into my Dark of the Moon collection or movie verse in general and this is the one that does it. So I'm pretty happy for that. Uh, anyways with that said, there he is. I'm so glad that we finally got this character but it had to take like a third-party company to do it. Oh well. It, it's still a nice looking car. I like it. Uh, transformation is um... Whoa, okay, let's go ahead and start. The first thing you want to do is take these out, and that is pretty difficult sometimes. Um, I've noticed that it's loosened up, but uh, you get some little pegs and little holes on the side here that you have to pop off, and be careful, you don't want to rip that off. Um, but you just move that to the back like so, and let's see, what else? Uh, try to open the doors and don't pull from the, uh, the mirrors because that is plastic, not rubber. And uh, I feel like I'm going to snap those. So, um, But my recommendation is try to get your fingernail in between that little bit of plastic. You can see that little bit of plastic that just sticks out is not part of the door. So you have to get your thumb in between that and just pull that out. So yeah, hey, you have doors! And then just try to extend this out just to get everything out of the way. Um, if you're not patient with this, then uh, you are going to have a bad time. But if you're careful enough and you know you take your time, you're probably not even going to get this uh, transformed right away, you know, correctly. God, words today, it's just... Uh... <laughs> Anyways, um, moving right along, what you want to do next is take this and pop it up and you can see that that just pops like so and that will just help get things out of the way and just try to 
Uh, let's see. Try to pull this up like so. And if this pops right back in, just pop it right back out like so. Make sure it's popped out from the the back here. So I guess I guess you were supposed to pop those out and then pull from this and then bring that up. I guess that would have been easier. But anyways, once you have that done, you can see the peg holes right there. They attach to uh, little pegs that are inside these little bits. I'll show that off. You can see the little red peg right there. And then once you have that, this is pretty much what it's supposed to be. And then you take the legs and uh, let's see, what can we do? It's a very complicated transformation and, and you have to try to really plan out everything. Uh, extend these out and extend out the legs and rotate them out like so. Do the same thing to the other side. There's a couple of different joints that will help you do that. There's a double joint right here and of course you have the hips, but you also have a joint inside the leg right here that you have to use. So once you extend everything out, and I'm sorry that I'm showing the transformation into robot mode even though this toy is packaged in his alt mode. It's just so much easier if I do this. Uh, anyways, uh, moving right along, you also have, let's see, uh, you have to bend the knee just a little bit back and that peg will help kind of snap over that. It doesn't really hold too well, but, you know, it holds enough. And this is all on a double joint, so you just very patiently try to cover that up. Don't just force it or anything like that. Just It's easier just to wiggle it in place. And then the wheel here will rotate up and over the car bit. If not, just kind of fiddle with it, like so. Then you take this, and it's easier to unpeg it from the back here. You can see this little this little bit right here. You just unpeg that like so, bring that up and over, and bring that up from the wheel like so. Do the same thing to the other side like that, and then rotate that up. I guess you could try to... No, oh, no, you can't actually. It, it, I thought you could bring this down, but no, it, it stops partway through. So you don't want to do that. You might break it. Anyways, once you have that, you can just leave the legs like so. And uh, this little gray bit that I was trying to talk about in the instructions, you have to lower this down to get out of the way for the legs to go in place. The instructions don't really tell you to do that exactly, but it does show you in that whole uh, the, the picture with the arms and the legs inside here. It, it does show this down, so just keep a note on that. And then bring this out like so. Bring the arms out, take the wheels, and fold them down like so. Take the wheels, fold them down like so. You can see that stem of plastic. And then take this section right here, and then bring this down like so. And just leave it like that. Do the same thing to the other side. And then try to untab that from the hood like so. You can see the pegs, you can see the holes like that. And then just leave that down just for right now. Take the arms and bring them out. There's a couple of different joints that will help you do that. And when you rotate it in, make sure that the ball joint is facing down like so. And we do the same thing to the other side. Take the arms and rotate them forward like so. Bring back the gray bit, rotate the hand, and the arms are pretty much done. So the arms don't really do much for this toy, but that's a good thing, and we'll talk about why that's a good thing in a second. Next, what you want to do is, and this is really hard to do, this is really frustrating, so uh, let's see. Okay, so next what you want to do is try to pop this out like so, and bring that up. It's a lot easier to go into robot mode than it is to alt mode because you've got all these different tabs that hold it in place. And then you've got these red bits right here that you have to pop out. Now the unfortunate side with that is you've got a, the tabs facing both sides and one of them is hooked on so it, it, it's really hard to pop out. And then also you have this section right here that's angled off to the side that's keeping everything in place. Now, it's a good thing that it keeps everything in place, but it's really difficult to pop out, especially on this side, I found. Oh, that was pretty easy. Oh, you know what helps? 
there is a joint inside the the chest that moves it to the side so that really helps uh, work with that um let's see okay now we got this going on as you can see it's a really complex transformation um and i'm still trying to figure it all out okay so uh next what we can do is probably work on the backpack just to get that out of the way so there's a rotation joint right here that will rotate this section around like so Let, let's show that off again because the, the camera was too low uh let's see bring that up and then bring this up so this will rotate around like so and then you take this section right here and then that will untab and just be very careful with that and then take this red hood section and then rotate that around and then swing that down into here once you have that done you make sure that this section is up because there's a clear slider that has to go in between the joint right here let me try to show that off right here you can see the clear slider right there has to go down past this red hood section and then it has to go in between this joint right here you can see that little gap once I push this down you'll see that that will fill in that section let me pull this out so that you can see that easier like so you can see that little bit of plastic that just sticks out and then it will get stopped by the joint or not the joints but the uh, the peg uh, peg holes sections the frame right here for the holes uh this section will stop at that point so if you follow everything carefully you shouldn't be able to break anything anyways moving right along from that uh we could take this section and rotate the sorry sorry about that we can rotate the hips forward and then this little red section right here will rotate up and connect onto the hips so now they won't wiggle around. Then next what you want to do, let's see, is you want to take the wheels and you want to rotate them around like so this way. So rotate them that way. And then next what you want to do is lift this up, open this section up like so, so you can lift up the head or uh, fold down the chest so that the head can go through and flip this down like so take the wheels and you can see inside there there's a peg that will go into the hole on the wheels so we just do that i'm just going to do that quickly Let's see maybe fold up the uh the torso so that you can <laughs> so that you can see that the wheels go into there and it's a really nice peg uh, which, by the way, I forgot to say, the wheels have a rubber frame around them, so that's good. Um, and then once you're done with that, you take these little bits right here, and you fold them up like so. Like so. And then that will snap into there somewhere, like that. Eh, doesn't really do a good job, but there is a way to hold that in place. This little black bit that was forward will now go back like so. And then you take the chest. And let's see. And the chest will fold in itself like so on the double joint. And then we'll also rotate down. Now, you've got a hole right at the bottom here. And then you got a peg. And that will combine into there so that the chest doesn't flop around like so. And we're almost done with the toy, like that. And then you just finish with these. You can do whatever you want with those. And there's his head. Move his head forward because it's on a double joint. Uh, let's see. With the feet, you want to open these sections up and then flip up the toes, like so. Do the same thing to the other side, like that. Flip up the toes, like so. And we're almost done. Now what you're supposed to do once you move these little bits out of the way what you're supposed to do is move these into here like so i'll show that off on this side you can see the doors have a hole and then you got that little peg right there you fold them down into there 
The unfortunate side about that is there's no real clearance with this coming up to here. Uh, the joints just don't really allow that to go into place. So I don't really put them in the pegs. I don't really try to do that. Uh, this back section will unhinge like so and then flip up. And there's a little hole right there that the tab will go into. Same thing to the other side, like so. I will peg into there. And then there's a little peg right at the top here that will go into that little hole behind the head. So we'll flip that down. And then try to plug that into place, like so. Make sure that everything's right where it should be. Then fold up the doors to however you wish, whatever you can do with those. And then bring up the shoulders, do whatever you want with that, pose him however you want. That is Farage in his robot mode. And my god, is that a complex transformation for this toy. I feel like with everything going on here, I probably prefer them to cut corners because this is about a $60 to $80 toy, uh, considering everything. So all this going on is really difficult, but it makes for a nice looking toy. It looks like Dino from the film. Of course, you got back kibble going on right here. That's unfortunate, but uh, everything else going on, it looks pretty good. And when I first saw this toy, I thought, oh yeah, they're coming out with a Dino statue third-party thing. Oh yeah, that's cool. Oh wait, it transforms? Yeah, I was kind of surprised by that. Um, but overall, he looks pretty cool. Articulation, let's go through that because he's got a lot going on for him. He's got a ball joint in his head, and then he's also got a joint that allows it to move back, so that's good. Uh, you have a ball joint right here, then also a couple of different joints inside the shoulder for transformation. You also have a rotation joint right up here. You have a really tight and almost scary rotation down here. So you have a couple of different joints with that. You also have a double joint in the elbow, so you can bring the arm all the way up. That is nice. Uh, without the posable fingers, you have rotation right here. You also have a joint right here. The thumbs on the ball joint, the front of the fig uh, fingers are combined, and then also with the spikes that move. So you have a couple of different points of articulation with the fingers, with the hands. So that's really nice. Uh, inside here, oh, that's not up all the way. There we go. You have rotation in the hips, but it doesn't really do too much, but I, I, I'm glad it has it. You have a ball joint in the hips. You also have a rotation up here. You have a double joint in the knee. You also have a ball joint in the feet, and all these little things on the bottom of the feet can move. These side things move, the toes on the front can move, and then the heel bits can move. So you have a lot of articulation on this toy, a lot of posing options, which is fantastic. And he does look good in so many poses. Um, I actually have on my Facebook pages uh, albums of me just posing this guy, and it, it was just a quick little thing. It wasn't supposed to be anything major, but he still looked good. The only real issue that I have with articulation is two things. One, uh, there's a lot going on with the legs in the backpack that just hit each other. And I don't feel like that's, uh, that's fun. But, uh, you know, I can get away with it. And then the ball joints in the feet are way too loose for my taste. Uh, maybe it has something to do with the fact that it's got die cast in the feet, which is very cool. But, uh, yeah, just something to watch out for. He still poses well. He, you can do whatever you want with that. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I do like the toy. And not only that, not only does he have articulation, but every single one of his weapons and accessories have articulation. You have a joint at the top here that you can move however you wish. And then you also have this connection joint right here to where you can see these arms sticking out to the side. They'll move together. So you'll have more articulation on this toy. That is so cool. And you can plug them onto the bottom of the arms, just like the actual character had. Very nice. Uh, if there's one thing I have to criticize, is that I wish the peg hole was thicker. Or not thicker, but uh, was deeper and that the pegs were longer because they like to come off pretty often. But uh, other than that, I mean, that's really cool. I'm not going to pose them up too well. 
but you can do a lot of stuff with that, and that is very nice. I, I, I love these little blades. I, I think they're so cool, but that's not the only weapons you get. Just like in Dark of the Moon, when he battles off Hatchet, you could take these little things with the wires, you can plug them onto the same peg hole like so. Bring the thumb around and bring the finger around the wire, which is easier said than done. Sometimes it will pop off, but uh, you are able to add those little whip things. And you can take this gray bit and move that down if you like, just for add support. And let's see, do the same thing to the other side, even though the whole thing just popped off again. I'm going to have to re-glue that or something, but uh, until then, let's see. Gonna just plug that in like so, just for right now. Just stay in place for right now. And let's see. Ah, and that popped off again. Whatever you do, do not try to take off the wire from this. Because it's frustrating to try and plug that back on. Trust me, I've tried. And uh, plug that back into place like so. And just leave it like that. And there you got the whips from Dark of the Moon. Very cool. I do enjoy that, despite the fact that this is a problem. But that's a problem for my case, not the toy. So that that's not that, that's not a concern you need to be worried about. So um, the only problem with the wire things is well they kind of bend around and you get all these different ridges and the whatever it, like it just looks messed up. Um, I I wish there was a clear outline to it, a, a rubbery clear outline, but uh, I'm not sure how well that would do either. So. With that out of the way, uh, very cool, very red, I do like that. His chest seems a little too big, but considering everything that's going on with this toy, I'm not going to complain too much about it. Uh, oh, and also you get these little bits at the bottom here that you can stick out if you want. So, very cool. As far as his head design is concerned, it's mostly one piece, or two pieces, or however, yeah, it's mostly two pieces. And, uh, yeah, that looks pretty cool. You can see the coloring in his eyes. That's very nice. I do like that. I think that is cool. Anyways, moving right along from that, we gotta do some size comparison. So let me move the box out of the way. Let me move all this stuff. And, uh, I've got a lot to size compare, so you gotta have to sit back and enjoy. Uh, the first thing we have is Masterpiece Sideswipe. So, yeah, he's a little bit smaller than him. I mean, MP Sideswipe is, I think, a little more pricey than this, so, I mean, you know, that's whatever. Uh, moving right along, we also have uh, Chrome Dome, which is usually my go-to size compare toy. And uh, as you can see, he's a little bit taller than Chrome Dome, so he's about deluxe to Voyager class size. Um, and then I also have a whole bunch of other movie toys. From the past and present, here is Nitro. As you can see, Nitro is obviously a lot taller than Dino. Very good. Uh, let's see, what else do I have? I have uh, another modern deluxe class last night toy. We have Barricade. I don't know why, I kind of like that size comparison. kind of like the fact that Dino is a little bit taller. I don't know why, maybe that's just me. Uh, Dark of the Moon toys, because that's, you know, what this is based off of, a Dark of the Moon toy. I have a Voyager class Megatron. So you have that. Not gonna really stand them up too well right now. Uh, and then for a Deluxe, again, there's a piece of paper on it for no reason. I have Dark of the Moon Topspin, and I kind of like that scale. You know, that works. I'm fine with that. And then, uh, let's see, uh, last but not least, I wanted to size compare this with the Hunt for the Septicons Battle Blades Bumblebee. And to me, that size comparison is pretty much perfect. That is on spot for me. Um, I'm not sure if that's exact, though. I'm not sure if that's accurate. I'm just saying that's the size I prefer. But I, I like this. So, um, with that out of the way, um, yeah. I like these two. Um, do I recommend Farage? Well, not to anyone who's going to be really impatient. I definitely recommend you take the time to really understand it. 
before you have a final opinion on it, and you take your time with the toy. You don't want to rush the transformation. It usually takes me about 10 to 15 minutes to try to figure it out. And this was a toy where even on the first couple of tries, I needed the instructions beside me. Um, the, the first couple of times, I needed the instructions because I wasn't sure exactly if I was doing everything right. Uh, after that, I just had the instructions beside me, though. Uh, so sometimes I won't even open it up, but I just feel better having it beside me while I'm transforming it. Uh, I don't transform it too often, though. But as far as this robot mode is concerned, if you just want it for the robot mode, yes. Definitely. I think he's a cool toy. I, I love his look, his style, his overall design. Um, and I'm so happy that they finally decided, Hey, you know, as a third-party company, we should probably do something that's not an IDW or whatever, or Generations Legends. Let's focus on something else that people wanted for years, people wanted and screamed for. And finally, Alien Attack decided, hey, let's go ahead and do that. And they did this. I think as for a newcomer company, newcomer company, does that even make sense? Does that even sound good? Anyways, as far as a, a, a new company is concerned for their first product, which I believe this is based on the concept, or not concept, a, a custom uh, that the guy did, which makes sense because I'm seeing some themes from the, uh, the Hunt for Decepticons Bumblebee with how the waist transforms. Um, I think that's a pretty good start. Unfortunately, though, I'm seeing that their next products are the Optimus Prime and Hound from The Last Night in Age of Extinction. And in my personal opinion, I feel like they should have done something different. I, I kind of like how the Optimus Prime looks. I kind of like how the Hound looks. But if it were up to me, I would take the time to focus on another character that never really got a toy. Because there's a lot of characters in the movie-verse that don't really have toys. That aside, it does look good, and there is definitely an audience for it. I, I like the look of the Optimus Prime. I, I don't know if I'm going to get it, but I do dig the style. Um, and the transformation looks pretty fun, too. Uh, again, it, it is complicated, but, you know, it's fine. Um, I think what could have improved on this toy is tabs. I feel like if you had a lot more tabs and pegs that will show you exactly where things are supposed to go, I think that would have been much easier for this toy. But at the same time, you don't have a lot of those pegs and whatnot showing up in the robot mode. So I do appreciate that. With that out of the way, uh, that's my opinion on the whole. Uh, I paid 80 bucks for it. I really don't... Re uh, not recommend. I really don't... Rec <laughs> I almost said it again. I really don't regret paying that price, actually. Um, and it might just be me because I really wanted a Dino toy, but um, I like the robot mode so much, I, I, I just keep messing around with it. I think it's a pretty fun toy. Um, to some people, it's not going to be worth that price. I understand that, but for me at least, I really like him. Uh, go ahead and check out my photo album for more. I know this review has been long, but I mean, the transformation was so difficult for me to go through and explain. Ugh. No wonder I have trouble with the instructions. Um, anyways, with that said, I thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and all those fun dudettes, and we'll see you guys next time.